Okay, so um, follow up on the uh, petition which I made about to make anglophobia a form of hate speech. Uh, the uh, UK government and parliament, a petition section department, sat on it for about two and a half weeks. Uh, usually it takes about a week, less than a week to um, uh, to confirm. They sat on it and then came back and rejected it. And as you can see there, the reason below is what they've given, uh, because they're saying that it's been de uh, debated or something similar has been debated at this current moment uh, in the government uh, and the House of Parliament. Uh, but they've classified it as in terms of uh, hate crime uh, if the offence has demonstrated hostility based on race or been motivated by hostility based on race. Now, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to disagree with me with this, but Britain, being British, isn't a race. Being English, being Welsh, being Scottish, isn't a race. Okay, what do I mean? Uh, if you think some time back at Rhodesia, yeah, there was no Rhodesian race. Rhodesia was an area of land which was named after Cecil Rhodes. And the people within that land were predominantly the Shona and the Bantu with some Europeans. OK, but they were ethnicities, yeah, ethnic groups. Yeah, and the same applies in the United Kingdom. We are a collection of different ethnic groups uh, unified in regards to language, uh, culture, historical references, etc. Uh, so ethnicities. And this and that also can apply to um to a certain degree uh uh, uh Islam, if you like, uh or even Christianity. It's, it's ethnic groups, different ethnic groups. So for me, the idea of the petition was simply to say, look, as an ethnic group, uh, we are the majority within the UK, and therefore our culture, our language, our traditions uh, should be protected, overall protected. What, and and as an ethnic group, it's something which you participate in, you can participate in over a period of time. Um, what we've got here, in my opinion, is the uh, you could call it the government or the elites is shutting down debate. Yeah, if you come up with a way in order to debate something in a manner which can have a counter, contra voice or narrative, it is shut down. It is shut down. Uh, so for me, um, it, it's a bit like the salami close. Now in sales, uh, you have a situation where you might agree. Uh, a deal with somebody, um, maybe you, you want to buy a house and uh, both parties you agree and then one of the parties come back and say, well, could you just change clause A and could you just change clause B and could you just change uh, clause C and uh, E, F and G, could you just change those? And bit by bit by bit by bit by bit, when you make those changes, you've got a completely wholly different agreement. And this is what we're having at the moment within uh, our country by making little change here and a little change there and a little change here a little change there what we're having is we're having a completely different country and a completely different culture okay uh banter for example banter banter only works when two parties understand the nuances of the same language really yeah that's how the banter works yeah when you start bringing in laws because people might be offended by the banter because they don't really properly understand the nuances of what's being said, then you've got, you know, then that bank evolves and then you've got that sense of humour, which is tampered with. So we know, for example, you would never be able to have uh, a Monty Python life of uh, Ahmed, for example. It's just nowadays that would be banned. Yeah, that is an element of our culture, which has been salami sliced away. Yeah. So uh, what we, what I believe is happening is that we are being gaslit. Uh, I'd like to say by the elites, but maybe it's even higher up. Maybe it's more overarching from that. I did do a video on anglophobia and the two pronged attach, attacks by wokeness and also from uh, other elements and elements uh, affecting the culture overall.
but it feels like we're being gaslit and forced to accept things. And in Scotland, they've gone a step further, whereby your views in your own house can be penetrated and used against you, and you can be charged. And by this slimy closing and ebbing away, yeah, it, it happens. So, for example, uh, the government having an idea that uh, people who are on pensions or people who are on uh, uh, benefits, yeah, they can look in their bank accounts. And at first, it's like, yeah, okay, fine, you know, uh, pensioners and people on uh, universal credit, etc. Why not? Yeah, maybe they might be cheating the system, blah, blah, blah. But once that's implemented, you know it gets rolled out to the wider community and everyone's peering, you know, certain state can start peering into everybody's bank accounts. So what, you know, what, how do you counter this? What do we do to counter this? There are different ways of countering it. Uh, and a fast and easy way of countering it is the use of social media. Now, the powers that be are absolutely petrified of social media because it's where the public get a voice and you can make a voice heard outside of the normal democratic process. So you only have to look at the likes of, say, Russell Brand, Julian Assange, or obviously uh, uh, Andrew Tate, for example. Um, and there was Kevin Samuels at one point. Yeah, the, 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 the mainstream media are absolutely petrified because it's being usurped by social media. It's bigger and stronger than the, the mass uh, media. OK, for example, most of the news which I get nowadays, I'm getting it from the social media element. It's very rare that I'd look on the television for the actual news now. Or I will hear it on social media first and then tune into the national news to get a little bit more sort of curated view of what's been going on uh, in the world. Um, so you know, the use of uh, individual channels like YouTube channels and uh, uh, X or Twitter, so to speak, these are very powerful mediums which need to be enriched but also need to be coordinated. The other element is something which I saw with another different ethnic group. You could call it like the George Gallery called George Galloway election, which is we've got to stop voting for these silly parties. Sometimes we do it by in um, out of habit, uh, family tradition. You know, uh, my family was Labour, so I'm always voting Labour. Or you know, I'm Conservative, I always vote Conservative. You know. These sort of uh, tribal lines, you, you've just got to shake up and you've got to start, I believe, going back to what uh, MPs, Member of Parliaments and constituencies were all about, which is choosing an individual to represent their constituency and put their constituency over and above anything else other than the benefit of the country and the nation. What we've got with party politics is but constituents play second and third or fourth fiddle. They're not really part of it. And they will parachute in any old body based on the habits of those constituents. The constituents are so, you know, they don't really care who it is. As long as it's got Labour on their lapel or Conservative on their lapel or Green on their lapel, then they will vote for them. They don't really care about the candidates, yeah? You've got to stop doing that. You've got to start voting for individual people. And once you've got enough individual independence in the Houses of Parliament, you disrupt the oli oli uh, oligarchy, which is there at this moment in time, because they're not changing anything. We know that in this current, you know, with the elections coming up, you know, blue or red, it doesn't really matter. There's not much difference going on, um, not much difference going on at all. If you really want to disrupt it, you have the House of Commons filled with independent candidates where amongst themselves they would have to elect a, 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 an executive if you like and, and vote uh, independently for a prime minister okay uh, so yeah th this, th these are my thoughts really I suppose many of you uh, are saying well you know it was always going to be the case that they were going to reject the peti uh, petition and unfortunately you know it was a way of uh, having a voice but that, that has been shut down shut down now if you really want to put the cat amongst the pigeons if you really wanted to put the cat amongst the pigeons you would do some type of an online campaign to uh nominate someone like tommy robinson to have a a, a knighthood 
because that is available. You know, that is yeah, you know, that is an option. You have the freedom to nominate anybody to have a knighthood. And I'm surprised that that hasn't been pushed forward at this moment in time. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I'll just leave that out. It's just a quick, short little video uh, as to an update on uh, that petition. But so many uh, technical issues.